Another one of the Art Be Creative Community uh, live videos, live art demos. We're here at Boot Artworks, which is the gallery of art from Artbeat alumni. So for those that don't know, Artbeat is a nonprofit organization that believes in using art as a tool to deal with our mental health challenges. So we offer a free six months residency and we have a free drop-in art studio across the hall from here in Portage Place where you can come, anyone 18 plus, and make some art. Um, but for those that can't be there right now or are looking for something during the after hours, we have these videos for you. So like usual, since we have the opportunity to be in the gallery, we're going to show off one of our artists and read one of their bios. Um, so this week we're going to talk about Kanksy. Do we have the bio? Yes, we do. And I will flip around and show you Kanksy. the art. Kanksy was born in Winnipeg to an artist mother and early on enjoyed art, crafts, and photography. She later started woodworking, printmaking, and fashion design. Kanksy earned an MA from SFU in international relations with a thesis on Canadian foreign policy towards Ukraine at the time of independence, and an MFA from UBC. She taught English in Japan and Hong Kong, where she met her partner and raised their children. She has written illustrated children's books, young adult novels, and newspaper and magazine features. But her bread and butter has always been writing and editing educational materials. She was development editor at Longman Asia ELT and worked with illustrators and voice talents. She still writes educational materials for Oxford University Press. After a severe stroke in 2015, Kangsi picked up a paintbrush again. It was easier than typing with one finger. She admires Banksy, is inspired by art brute, outsider art, and German expressionism and aspires to do our prima single sitting painting. Kanksy's current work is largely made up of text accompanied mixed media, acrylic inks, paper and canvas. Social criticism predominates, especially around failures in Canada's and Manitoba's disability support systems. She confronts hypocrisy with sarcasm. But humor can also gently balance the bitterness of those ill-served by the system, she adds. Art offers an avenue of speech no one can criticize. On the Artbeat experience, it taught us how to be non-judgmental, to create a free space to create, explore new genres in the media, and bond with other artists. Photo by Johnny Peters, fired by Michael Lennon. Amazing. And they are again like the ones we've been going through one of our newer alumni graduates from the program so we have lots of new we pieces from them here which is called a bing bang and the uh there are two scientific theories behind each of them and there are different theories that show um um let's say same idea but from a completely different perspective of mm -hmm. science also we have the cassandra galandrini piece here it's called fighting the current and it's what i believe worked to actually yes. separate them a little bit and mm -hmm. the artists wanted to show that they're not one theory they're two different separate theories and we're coming to continuation of what we're doing last friday and I do not say I have a perfect solution for the leaves because each time, each painting, it can be different. And I'm not too experienced with painting the leaves on brush. Yes. So uh, let's say it's partially figuring out, partially doing what I have, uh, what yes. I got used to do. Leaves can be hard. <laughs> yeah, it, I did not pick an easy thing, I guess. <laughs> All right. Uh, the task is, for myself, for this particular painting, was not to worry about getting things wrong, redoing things, putting them, placing them differently if I don't like it, 
if I don't write this, I can repaint it. Mm -hmm. I repaint it. So I did not have the idea of actually sketching it first and just working just on the area where it goes to. I work a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say looseness is what I want yes. for this one. I did not work much on the crow. I say I didn't work at all after. I, I did not get to the feet even. They do not get finished. So definitely you would not see the outline that is proper because you want to work on this piece first mm -hmm. and then move to it and just get it done properly. But today we're focusing solely on the part where the leaves are. Uh, so this is the fence, which I can just show very quickly. I chose any random green would do, could be Christmas green. Mm -hmm. So I get Christmas green. It could be light green. I used green like this and it works really well, but it can be basically any, any green. Um, then I pick warm white it could be, it could be same warm white but a newer model. <laughs> or it yeah. could be this, which is warm beige, but I don't know if I can squeeze yeah. it out. I just brought random things from home, so. I would have white for some areas, but I can also mix it afterwards for the detail, but not use it right away. And then I'm using black, some black. So basically just having it on the brush without mixing too much on the easel is doing the job. So the job is I don't want to keep it solid one color. It can mm -hmm. be darker in one place and lighter in the other place. Uh, so if I want to place this three evenly, this one is too low. So I can just go right here move it move it here and I'm getting some <laughs> sit ups at the same time <laughs> so I can just use this mixture and if I don't like it I can just add more and spread it out more of flesh more of green I can get green and this is basically the shade I'm getting. I can just throw in random colors. Could be just yellow. Yeah, and you mix it a little bit while you're painting. Yeah, mm -hmm. not a little bit. I tend to actually mix <laughs> a lot, a lot of, of it. <laughs> so uh, again, my point was not to worry about the, I know there are lines appearing from mm -hmm. each time I paint. They would be visible through the surface, I agree. It's not something that we get when we have mm -hmm. exact sketch and work really accurately, but working very accurately sometimes does not help. Mm -hmm. um, especially, like that depends on the task you're choosing for each of the areas. So I might skip this area just because it's too close and it's standing and talking. I'm not taking the task on myself as, uh, to just work on stuff like this. So I will just make something that is easier to work with while you talk. So yeah, there are several shades you can mix and the colors I chose are, I chose this yellow pink and it actually works really good for the leaves when you need to actually get the shades that are not too bright. I did not want brightness, I mm -hmm. wanted, what you can see they're not bright at all. Yeah, they're, they're green, but they're not as bright green as yeah. uh, Naples yellow, which is not too bright too. It does not keep the brightness. Mm -hmm. Again, warm white. I got white. I have it. I've oh, stolen there it. it is. I've stolen it over so here. So black and white, you know, it's just Dilarama black yeah. and white. But also, I have uh, different greens. Sub green, I can use for a little tiny bit of brightness if I want to. I don't have to add it though. I have the light green, which might work good for some areas to brighten it again. Uh, it's my personal color green if I want to do something that is not even there. I also got the browns, which are good for some parts of the painting, but it doesn't have to be used all over. Just little pieces that I can see that can be done with just flesh and black. 
So I don't have to use the browns, but I still have them. I have this lime tree green. I have different yellows. And so, but the basic ones are the first ones I showed. Oh, well, I mixed green with um, flash. Again, warm white. Flesh color, not real. We flesh. even have the neon, but again, neon yellow would work for parts that are imaginary. So it's, mm -hmm. it would be really imaginary. It's not on the photograph. And that's what most artists do. They do not paint exactly what's on the photograph. They have their own. They want to see it brighter. They do make it brighter, and that's great. So you see, this part of the fence would be just covered. I don't like this right here. So I will just cover it and I will make the fence look good after. I did not go over carefully uh, yet because I'm going to work on detail afterwards. So what I, I managed to do at home is basically paint it black and go over what I can do mm -hmm. uh, right away. So this one's not ready and I did not work on it at all. So this is here and then the other part of the fence would be here. Uh, and I do not say I'm getting there right away again. So I'm just marking where the fence is located for after. But I'm not working on this piece. So I will just show a little part of the leaves, I'm not showing everything. Again, um, what I mixed might not be perfect for everyone. And yes, I need the baby wipes because without even just the paper towel, I do not have baby wipes. And sometimes I feel like I need to clean my fingers because fingertips go on the canvas and I made some spots that are not really nice looking and have to cover them again and I did not work on the crow which is the final step when everything's done I can finally see how it's supposed to look like in already in front of what I painted <laughs> mm -hmm. so I did not really work on that okay so what I mixed again it's flash black different greens but i do not want them to be too bright i did not choose the bright ones and some greens that i mix separately uh, and we'll see so i added quite a bit of gray that i mixed with black and white and we need different grays so let's see how that goes um the leaves uh what we see we see the direction where they're going but we do not really see the full shape. So what I do, I know it's not exactly the shape. So if I add some flush on top of that and spread it, it's one of the solutions. That is probably the most basic solution for that. And then we could add white, a little tiny bit of white. And that's the shade I'm getting. I did not invent anything better than that. You want to add more green. I can take more green, put on top of that. And also decide too if like you're looking at the photo and you're going, I actually want it to be more green than the real photo. You can absolutely do that as well. And you know, with leaves, I actually go over them so many times while I paint. Mm -hmm. And I can never get the shape like this. Mm -hmm. So in my thinking, it's just getting the higher contrast between the leaves and what's behind them. Mm -hmm. And then if I want a different shade, it's, it's a different shade. So it does not look like nothing good at first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at first, it never looks good to me. <laughs> and I want to show the leaves behind that. So I just add darker shades. Yeah, but I can never get the shade that people would see here. Mm -hmm. so my mixture is not something. And 
uh, while I paint, I do not really focus on the exact color. Mm -hmm. I leave it for the like, for after. For after, when I have the idea of what I see, I can fix here and there, and I was always leaving it for after. I was never painting it right the way they way it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was just something. I can make them really bright and then tone them down with a bit of paint on top. Just a bit more liquid. So here, so what I get is basically this. I don't get anything better than that from the first time. shapes too because what I see is a random shape. I want to outline it, I want to add some white on top. I'm working on black with some people tend to make a mark and then let it dry. Most artists would do that probably. Just come back to it after it's dry and just mm -hmm modify the color. And also what I can do, I can take blue and mix it with flesh and add a tiny tip of green in it. And that's what I'm getting. That's the shade that is closer. It just appears to be gray, and then we could just get more green on top. And then the brighter ones, I still keep this on the brush because even the brighter ones are not too bright. Mm -hmm. So the main thing would be to separate them a little bit because you can definitely see the separation between the leaves. So each leaf needs to be outlined on all sides and some of them can be just left without an outline but it's just black. Just because it's the eyes we can just keep it like a spot, so you don't really see the leaf, but we know it's a leaf, mm -hmm. right here. The suggestion of a leaf. Yeah, it's just there, some spots. And then I, I work randomly, so this is just, same thing with more white and I don't, flesh might not be a good suggestion for everyone mm -hmm. because it gives the shade that many people would not want to see, it, it's not perfect. So I would say white is better, it's easier and looking nicer. Mm -hmm. And flesh I would use for the fence but I would not put it too much like this in the leaves. And I keep using blue for some. You kind of see it's purple. So we want to cover it with more green and white. And this way it just gives you the right shape for some of them that are not in the front. And we need to remember that each leaf, they're not the same. Some, one part of it is a bit darker, but it's really hard to make it um, without painting and with painting it's really hard to achieve mm -hmm. you need to actually think which 
which part is darker, which part is lighter. <laughs> and I did not place the fence the same way as there. My fence is bigger. And you know what? This part would be covered with a fence. So, <laughs> so now I'm just mixing that green, black, and flesh. I'm literally covering this. So one of the ways is just to paint the whole leaf and then cover it. It's just when you try to get the shape right that it comes out. For me, it's easier to just paint it without this idea, but maybe it works for someone. Mm -hmm. I'll just cover it. And then I add lots of green in that fence. Yeah. And as you notice, I don't have a very fine brush with me. It was an accident, but I just left it where, where I left it. <laughs> so, Okay, so now we have a little bit of an issue that many artists might meet with. So we painted something, but we need the fence smaller. Mm -hmm. So we need it smaller. And uh, what I would do is just outline this with black, right? Because here I didn't paint anything yet black on black and then I'm getting the right size and I'm still going to work on the fence but here what we need is a little tiny bit of an outline mm -hmm. and then we need to see exactly where the leaf goes so if we're getting a different green is it okay no we just need the exact same shade as we had before, unless you want to just repaint the leaf. But if it's different from all the rest, is it okay? I would not like if it's just too different, if it's just a big, huge difference. So I prefer painting it all approximately, I would, not see an artist working with just one shade and then going over all the leaves like in other mm -hmm. shade i cannot visualize that even i'm not patient and i was ne never working like that my work is just chaotic i see it here it's not it has an order but i do not think about the order so i see a spot i add it i don't have to repeat exactly what i see there but some areas i want to add this uh, brownish pink i have this pink which i can use for that mixed with flash for some leaves that are weirdly shaped right here and here mm -hmm. and then would they add some brown yes i would add some brown so these are the leaves that are just brown and do they need to have a tiny bit of shading? Yes, I would just do it with simple burnt, burnt umber. And I would shade the bottom of them. And then spread the space a little bit more. And then add a little tiny bit of the pink I used. And this way I'm getting the right shade. Well, might not be completely right, but it's closer to, to what I see there. So one part is just darker. On one side, I just leave it more brown, just definitely brown. And this one too, I see it's darker in the bottom. We could use the black as well, but it's just a little more 
So I can show what happens if I add rock. So I can completely clean the brush, make a line with black first, and then start adding the same exact chain I was talking about. So this is that. So I can mix a little tiny bit of black into that. And basically using both of the variants, using black and brown separately, and then some of the leaves you can add there. So we had a little bit more gray in it, so it would not be the same. Uh, the same shade on all the leaves, because they're all different, they all have different direction. So each of the leaves need to have some kind of a uh, or the brown ones. I'm not talking about the um, these ones yet because what I see, uh, these ones have a little tiny bit of a highlight on one part, part of the leaf. Some of them, not all of them. So I would say one leaf, I can paint a highlight. I can paint one leaf on top of another leaf. It just stays behind it. So just use the same green that is light, but just make it a bit, a bit brighter than the back one, just here, and then what I see that all the leaves are outlined, but would I outline all of them? I don't know, I didn't get to all of the leaves. So just working, so I want to cover that. I don't want it there. It's really hard to not go by feeling here because it just. So each leaf can be worked on individually and I can add black spots here and there. I can just outline everything. So if we work on each of the leaves, we want the black to be around some parts of it, not all of that. And then some parts can be tiny bit lighter and we just keep adding detail, but detail is, I don't know what it is. Like, I don't know, it, it could be a part of the, something going on there behind it and it doesn't have to be a leaf. Just a spot right here, and then I don't want black there, so I just add some browns. It's what I see. And you, if you ask me if I know what it is, could be a part of the fence, could be anything, wall. And then I, I see some kind of a, uh, it probably is a leaf that goes out that goes out of there. Something like this. Do I need to finish it screen now? I don't know. It just looks like this to me. And then it disappears. So I just blend it. So blending should be really accurate here. I'm not good at accurate blending. <laughs> but that's what I'm getting. So, do you think it's good? I think it's good enough to show this little piece right here. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's good enough. So just blend it in just a spot behind yeah. the leaf. I think sometimes. Um, when you're painting from a photo, I often find there's certain things where it's like, I can't quite understand what I'm seeing. And like, if you were there, I guess you could investigate. But sometimes you just have to go for like, <laughs> painting what you see, you're seeing, even if you don't understand it. And then you'll find that like, in the final, it'll make sense, or it'll look like it makes sense, because that's just what it looks like. And this is just going with bright. 
mixture. This is the mixture I have uh, if I want to make it not as bright, I could just add white and then it would require another layer. Mm -hmm. So I do not really focus on covering all the black right away. Mm -hmm. You can still see it. And again, uh, when I add more, I add more. It just it can be just something like this even, just random. And then you come back and cover it that way. <laughs> when it's just the first layer, you know, first layer sometimes is see-through. And do that. One part of the leaf is usually darker, so we'll just add more dark on one part and more white on another part just to make it look the way it looks. And then I can actually use this green. So this one is actually, okay, I just want to show uh, where is that green that I was using. No, not this one. Oh, here. So this is just the Christmas green. Usually Christmas green, hunter green is good just the way it is. So you can just use it the way it is for some of the leaves and then add a tiny little bit of black in it just darken it and do i see it just a part that i cannot really see well it's just behind somewhere but also i can show this one is sub green and it's a bright one so if I'm going to use the sap green, and I, if I put it right away, it would show the whole brightness mm -hmm. of it. Again, I just add a tiny bit of black. And this way, we are getting two different shades of green. And what we can see are two different shades of green. So I would say I would go with just uh, black and green, black and green, uh, and hunter green. I just didn't bring it with me. I would use hunter green and like the dark green mixed with black. Mm -hmm. Or we could just mix it with blue. So I'm just mixing regular green, the Christmas green, with blue. And what I'm getting uh, not, is not for everyone. So to this variant, I would add lots of black, so it just literally gets into dark gray. So why not use just black? So what I'm getting is a shadow that it, it's not a leaf by itself, it's what in between the leaves. Yeah. And it's just catching on some green, but it's not the leaf by itself, because I would not see it. I don't know if, it, if I helped anyone at all. Uh, this is yellow. We can just grab yellow, which we do not see at all. But it has all the grays on the brush already. So I would not want the yellow. I would just tone it with white. That's what I'm getting. That looks like gray, just gray. Should I leave it just to see how it looks after in between? I can leave it and I could always just add green on top of it when it, when it dries, because now it would absorb the whole, whole paint. I'm inventing leaves now because it's beyond the part that is visible for me. Inventing means just uh, seeing the leaf in the front, similar to the shape of what I saw here. And do I need to outline all of them? I will, because that's what I see. Do I have to? No, I don't have to, actually. But I just feel like 
right now. Maybe I will not feel like that when there are too many leaves. Maybe I'll say no, I don't want to. <laughs> and you know, I get tired sometimes. It feels like, it's like uh, I just sit and paint and then I get up and I feel like I was doing something physically demanding. <laughs> It kind of is physically. Just a lot of focus that goes in there. Mm -hmm. And I know that my leaves are not the best leaves, definitely. I do not claim to be experienced <laughs> in that. I do not have too much experience with uh, greens. <laughs> They can be really challenging. <laughs> so this is just the very end with with flash, which I say I do not like. I want to end whatever because I didn't like the result. With bright green. So just for the difference, I show the subgreen the way it is, right here. It does not look like a leaf because <laughs> what I did, yeah. right? So if I add subgreen, it would be something completely different. It's not these leaves. It's yeah, it looks it's so another green spot. <laughs> yeah. Something. So I definitely want to adjust the color. So the main thing is to get the right mixture, which I did not get. <laughs> so you're just getting a brighter variant with this. And I guess I want to tone it down. I don't want it too bright. I'll just add white. I want to enjoy what I do, so I just don't put too much expectation. Uh, of it should look like this, no. And when you have too much expectation, you don't have the interest. Because you yeah. think, I cannot do this, so I just don't do it. <laughs> but I want to away from it. It can take a long time. Black and green. I still add a little tiny bit of green. It feels weird to not add green right away. I could have kept it just right. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> just painting the fence at the same time. I just keep the outline that I need. Mm -hmm. It just works out naturally, so 
just work on this outline and Well, I'm showing the moment with indenting the leaves. It just, I don't know, is it uh, visible or? I, I cannot see what is visible on the camera. So. Yeah, we can see it. <laughs> and I did not ask myself a question because I did not want to know exactly what it is. I just like it visually, but it's not, doesn't look like grapes to me. It could be not. <laughs> So what if I just get to the point I want to add spots randomly? I can show what happens. It would look really abstract. Yes. And then we can add a leaf on top. It will look like a leaf. With the context and having that released, you can kind of like understand what it is though at the same time. So it would just need to be outlined and to be separated or we could just keep it. The shape can keep it by itself without the outline. Mm -hmm. can just add different spots here and there. I might not like it. Couple so couple of hours later, mm -hmm. just remove that. So I'm just showing what I'm getting with. Okay, highlights are the hardest for me. One part of the leaf, like these leaves, mm -hmm. they look like plain color, but I can see a couple of parts is tiny bit darker yeah i don't know if i can actually do that just and a tiny bit of brightness on one part Just keep the top darker and lighter, depending. Something like this. So here I have enough, enough of white for me, I would not add more. Just a little tiny bit on top. And here I just want this part to be like this. Just keep the 
just one part because it's a tiny bit darker. With spots, we could just add highlights like in a random spot. It's just there, or it's just something in the front. I don't know what it is. We can create a completely different shape. Mm -hmm. And we could come up from the spots and see leaves in them. Might help someone who cannot imagine. And then keep adding light. So here I have one side which has a lot of separation, like it's just a single leaf. Mm -hmm. And another side is a mess of spots and just whatever. Yeah. But it looks like leaves. It does. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to see the surrounding area here because there is a light spot right here. I can focus on this, and it's actually, I don't know what it is, it's just light, it's light. Yellow and flush, I think. And then what's around looks brown. <laughs> right here. And do I know what it is? No. <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, I cannot recognize it. I don't know. And around there is black. greens and it's a little tiny bit blended so I would say I can keep black and then go over with a completely dry brush just to blend it with what's around it I'll, I'll take a different brush. I just like the brush to be absolutely dry for this. Just blend it a little bit more. Let's see, this brush picked up too much of paint inside of it. I cannot clean it. <laughs> You know, sometimes what I think does not get to my painting because painting is a very uh, deep process sometimes and I cannot, my thoughts do not go in the way of it. And I cannot really guarantee, I, I can think one thing and my hands would do another thing. I do not have full control on what I do. I made it into a different shape because the shape here is really weird. Mm -hmm. So I just made round light or something. I don't know what it is. Let it be round light. I think it is light. <laughs> Like just peering in through the leaves. <laughs> just keep going around it. And you know, here with this type of work, 
it's not about being courageous, it's about being, you know, um, a little bit of, uh, I know how I want it to look like I'm giving up on that. So keep this in mind that I gave up on something. I did not want to work on that. So I do not do that. So I do not do the really delicate art or care. Because if you go with that, it would possibly take way more time. I'm not ready to spend any more time. Mm -hmm. year on that, so no. Yeah, you're not forcing yourself to do anything that <laughs> won't. And focusing, if it's too hard to focus, don't focus. <laughs> so you really just don't want to focus too much. And let it just flow. So basically what I was doing, I was... It was really hard for me to focus during the live yeah. on what I do. And I feel like I got into the... Wow! <laughs> oh, you have the whole thing already? I'm That's having great. fun with my... My magpie from last week. It's not as uh, detailed a background as, as Kate's, but... <laughs> oh, it is not less detailed for me. <laughs> It's um, got its own character, you know? Yeah, I went for a bit more of a realistic approach um, than Kate's Crow, which obviously is super, like, you know, interpreted. It is. <laughs> That's a joke, in case you couldn't read my tone. I actually do not take it as a joke, by the way, by myself, because it is interpreted. I know what I you mean. mean look at mine! <laughs> I know what you mean, but I actually did not get into the line work right here and all that and all the feet yeah. things so i do not see it as something um i don't know maybe i'll get there i know how much work it can be done so uh, i'm still deciding do i want to actually go in on that process or mm -hmm. could i just uh not do that <laughs> is it gonna be enjoyable <laughs> is it gonna be worth it <laughs> might be enjoyable touching the lungs yes yeah the feet i'm not sure <laughs> <laughs> i'm not sure about the feet Again, my solution is the basic solution that I assume any artist would consider. I do not have a magic solution for this, for the leaves. <laughs> I, I cannot um, um, invent anything about that. It's just the way it works, and I know what artists see is important, because what we do with acrylic definitely is Again, printer. It does print to represent the color correctly. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Someone who sees it in person sees it the same. So I don't know. Maybe we can see it away more than we think. Yeah. But again, acrylic has some limitations, but also we have limitations. We mm -hmm. do not have. Do not have enough knowledge to know how they look like in reality. This printer is not going to be cool. Yeah, and to a degree to remember as well is that, like, in, your brain might not be able to interpret what you're seeing, but a lot of the time what you're seeing is technically right. It's just you can't quite grasp it, so just to kind of go with it or simplify it however you need, like. The la seeing the detail of every single leaf is not as important in this photo as like 
if you draw just it specifically. Just attention yeah. center, I just don't want the leaves look too messy, right? Yeah. So yes. this one, for, as an example, I'm not leaving it like this, definitely. Yeah. So if I don't get it from the first time, it's not a tendency, it's normal to actually work more and more and more until you get it. Yes. The right way. So I don't know if someone can actually do it from the first time, especially on black. Uh, another approach would be to draw each leaf individually and then uh, paint on top of drawing and not put black. I didn't go that direction already. I just did not. <laughs> no, it's just a spot that I outline. And then it becomes a leaf. <laughs> oh, we're up 55 minutes. We are coming to our end here. And what did I do? I just spoke a lot about... Okay. <laughs> we have a commenter that's <laughs> it's Arisa! Good thing the door is locked! <laughs> we are, yeah, we're already at 56 minutes, so if you want to finish up any last things you want to talk about. Just show what I have. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It speaks for itself. It you does. Consider it being it's beautiful. Weirdly acceptable. enough, <laughs> weirdly enough, one of my favorite parts is just the fence. <laughs> Something about the way you did it—it it just like it looks just right. <laughs> Plus the leaves. I can't wait to see more. The fence would need some highlights, definitely, and some detail. But I'm not going to work through all the details so you see i just spread a little tiny bit of yellow here and there and it already would give the effect of light right so not if it's too bright it's already not the lighting that we have um on the image but mm -hmm. you can add your own light if that's where uh i would say for beginning it might be neon yellow and after you can use it too. So I'm opening neon yellow. It can do magic sometimes, but not everyone likes the effect. So let's say on the each of the leaves, a little piece here, a little piece there, that would add some light, but also on the fence. And as you see, it just creates a shade, a shade yeah. which is not really Usually you do not see it on any of the photographs, but if you add it here and there randomly, it can just lighten it up and make it warmer looking. But uh, I myself, my personal preference would be Naples yellow in a combination. So it's the brighter, warmer parts of the image. It can just add more light to the fence with white in a combination with white and then the um, flush I would use for little parts of the fence that have the wood in it mm, wow. like this and then it definitely needs some kind of a um, black and I would say gray that you mix so it's not too visible but some areas would have yeah. darker spots here and there so this is what i'm planning 
only some shading on the edges so we can see the fence is actually round and not flat. Yeah. I did not get to that That's point amazing. yet. It Kate's doing this amazing sometime. realist <laughs> like realistic fence painting and I'm over here struggling to write my own signature. <laughs> Yeah, and it, then going it, crazy, blue, and different colors can add to it. But let's it, see. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Okay, we're done for yeah, today. Yeah, we're done for today. Bye. Bye. -bye.